We're kind of trying to stay up, uh, you know, with the uh, the uh, restaurants. Uh, I mean, we want to look maybe different than everybody else in a way, but we do want to be more modern uh -huh. than we have been. And so we're going in and uh, moving the new ones that way. And mm -hmm. every time we change one outside, we do it too. So some of the older restaurants, you're going to change too if they need to have repair done or something like that. But mostly it's just the new ones that you're changing. The yeah, we're actually doing probably 12 to 15 restaurants a year. Wow. redoing them outside right. as okay. we go. Um, okay, now inside I noticed you have something called carry home. That's also keeping pace with what's happening now with women yeah, not cooking as much. Carry out's a big thing now, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course you know, you've got a lot of you know, our competitors are, are people like uh, McDonald's and Wendy's and those kind of people too. Mm -hmm. In a way they are because it's carry out. So we decided we'd try to do some of that and, uh, mm -hmm. and do some of our product that way. Big pic the big picture is we want to be big in the restaurant business, mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty good in the food business, mm -hmm. fresh food, right, and then being frozen as well. Oh, okay. And being all three of them. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, um, in the different restaurants that you open, I hear you pick a charity for that specific area. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I, uh, I go in myself to, uh, to almost every one of them, uh, and, uh, and when we do that, we have a charity, we choose charity, and, uh, and it can be just about any, anything. We've done just about everything, actually, mm -hmm. across the board. That's a way for you to give back to the community. But that's what we try to do. We try to get some people uh, that are tied back into the community. Again. That's great. Now here at uh, the homestead, you have all kinds of activities. I was surprised with the horseback riding and canoeing. What did that all come out of the uh, having the farm be such an active, especially seasonal? You know, we've talked about the farm in all of our advertising for years and years and mm -hmm. years, and so people want to see it. And they come down, they want to see the place. So when they come down here, we we want them to. Uh, be able to do something while they're here. So we've got all kinds of activities, as you mentioned mm -hmm. a while ago. How much. We've got a lot of things happening. It runs all summer, from like May to the uh, first of November. And October is your big, big festival, isn't it? The fall festival is an outstanding event. We'll have to come down. We've had as much as 50,000 people here oh over a three-day period. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fun down here. Every October, something exciting happens at the Bob Evans Farm. It's the annual Bob Evans Farm Festival. It's been going on for about 30 years now. You'll see all kinds of crafts and demonstrations like broom making, basket weaving, iron work, sheep herding, corn shelling, music, and of course, great food. And then for the seniors, you have a wonderful senior menu. Yes, we do. The senior senior menu, we serve a lot of seniors. I bet. A lot of seniors, mm -hmm. and, and they come early, too. They come like 4 or 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then your people that are traveling with kids and so forth, they're more like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock type okay. people. So uh, we like to have the kids. We cater to the kids. And now, do you have they, a favorite? they make a mess on the floor and that kind of thing, that's, <laughs> it's okay. that's no problem. <laughs> no problem for us. Oh, we're glad of that. <laughs> that's right. Dan, I guess you've got over like 2,000 employees that are still with the company for over 10 years. Can you tell you us why they stay so long? Well, I think uh, we pay them pretty good mm -hmm. and treat them good mm -hmm. as well. And uh, But I just think we hire hire those kind of people that's going to come and stay with us. I mean, we try to anyway. Mm -hmm. It's like a family company it, in the sense really that your employees is, yeah. are part of your family. We've got 35,000 employees, which just blows my mind. They have that many employees, but mm -hmm. but uh, they love they love Bob Evans, and uh, we try to help them that mm -hmm. help them that way. Ohio has been very strong. Of course, that's where we started, and we built a lot of it before we ever moved out of here. But that was a that's a great uh, place for us to operate. I'm in front of the original Bob Evans restaurant, talking to longtime employee area director Jim No. What does the area director do? Judy, uh, my responsibilities are to supervise seven Bob Evans restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, what area? I'm up in the Columbus area. Okay. I, and then uh, the responsibilities are hiring the managers uh -huh. and helping develop them. And uh, also, we're, uh, Air Director is a linking pin, uh, pin between the corporate office and the restaurant, so okay. I can communicate back and forth. This is old haunting ground for you. I hear you used to work here in high school. Absolutely. I started here 29 years ago, Judy. <laughs> it was uh, 1971, uh, junior in high school. and. Uh, what and capacity? I, what did you do? Yeah, I started busting tables actually. Okay. And then I learned how to cook and, and mm -hmm. I graduated from college at Rio Grande in 1977 and went into management. Okay. And I spent uh, two years as assistant manager, eight years as general manager, now 13 years in my current position. These are just great opportunity for advancement with Bob Evans. Mm -hmm. Just look at myself. You start as a bus person and uh, work my way to an area director. Mm -hmm. And I think our employees know that. Um, they take you under their wing in other yeah, words. Yeah, and then uh, it's just Bob Evans is a family type restaurant where we care about our people. We want them to have quality time with their families, uh, not just work all the time. I think that means a lot. And, and we've got a great uh, benefit and uh, uh, salary compensation. So I think all those together, together. really. Together, yeah, make happy employees. Right. 
Jim, are there any uh, people that come into the restaurant that are constantly there for certain meals that you recognize and are friends and that you serve for many years? Oh, absolutely, Judy. We have a lot of regular customers. Well, it's nice as you're a hometown boy, you got to stay around your family, and obviously Bob Evans is an extended family for you and to these customers as well. All right. It's great talking to you. Thank you very much, Judy. Nice talking with Thanks. you. Thanks. Claude is a familiar face to everyone at the Bob Evans in Rio Grande. He's their best regular customer, eating there for 30 years. Here we are inside the original Bob Evans on the homestead in Rio Grande talking to a longtime customer of over 30 years, Claude Winters. Hi, Claude. Hi. Now, what keeps bringing you back here for all your meals? Well, the good food. Okay, and you said you have every meal here every day for the past 30 years. Most of the time. Most of the time. Every time. Yeah. Now, you've been a farmer here for years. You work down the street and you're retired now? Yeah. Okay, what did you used to do? I'm not retired. You're not? Good for you. I'm still working. You're still working? <laughs> God bless you. Is this your seat? Is that where you always sit? This is what I sit. What do they do when someone else is sitting here and you come to eat? Well, do they kick I them out? <laughs> I just moved down. You just moved down. Huh? They have a great senior menu here, too, as yeah, well, Yeah, they do. They? And uh, then I, you get to see a lot of people I know here. That, uh, well, that's right, because it's your neighborhood. It's yeah. like a neighborhood place to eat. Yeah, they, so many people come to regular, you know, uh -huh. post, uh, that I know. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they have regular customers besides you, huh? Yeah. Okay. You said your dad had a great vision, that, and um, and it's nice to be able to share that vision. And he got yeah. to see you be successful in it as well. Yeah. That must be a big thrill for you. Yeah, he was, my dad was quite a guy. He was uh, quite a businessman. Hey, I came in about two years after the company was actually formed, mm -hmm. and uh, and then went on from there. And I, I loved what I was doing. I, I worked three years at Xenia Plant mm -hmm. as an hourly person working in the, uh, in the plant. And then I uh, got up to where I was, thought I was, I was assistant plant manager, but I I couldn't make the manager's job because he's going to be around here for a long time, and so okay. they let me go to the uh, Galpies plant to another plant, okay. and I ran that plant down there for a while, and then eventually I ran uh, all the plants. At the Hillsdale plant, one of Bob Evans' six plants, three of which are located in Ohio, we enjoyed watching employees make all different kinds of sausage. They put loose sausage material into casings or the covering that holds the sausage together in your frying pan. Then the long rope of sausage is cut into links. Those links are put into packing trays. The packaged links are then put into shipping boxes. Here, loose sausage material is also being put in Bob Evans' wrap. This sausage can be cut into patties or used in various ways in recipes. You'll notice the packaging is red. This is the hot version of Bob's sausage. He makes lots of other versions, too. This sausage is also boxed for shipping. Then a conveyor belt helps put all the boxes into the refrigerated delivery truck and ships all the fresh Bob Evans sausage to your store for you to buy. You were saving your money though. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I saved my money because I wanted to own interest in this company. Yeah. And so every time I had an opportunity to buy some stock, why well, somebody would say, well, I want to sell some stock, I'd say, I'll buy it. And I'd buy the stock and, and I borrowed money every place. And uh, I was also surprised your company has always landed on its feet. It's like when you're building the first plant, um, how you made it into a pole building. Every addition I've seen like on your corporate office, instead of adding up, you slowly add it out and then up. Very yeah, cautious, yeah. very conservative, yeah. very careful. And, that, and that's a very good quality, obviously. It's worked very well for your company. Yeah, I think our company's been that way. I mean, over the years, we didn't borrow any money until the last uh, probably uh, five or six years. I was also impressed with the fact that you never franchised. You own all of them. Yeah, so you have an interest in all of them, and that's why when you go and you talk to the people, you know what's going on in each one of your restaurants. Well, we studied we studied the uh, franchising several times, and mm -hmm. it probably would have made us, we could grow a lot faster if we mm -hmm. did. But you wouldn't have control no, We just much. didn't think we could control it. Right. right. And, and uh, that's why you, you all have that consistency of quality in every Bob Evans that right. you go to, right. food-wise and service-wise. Mm -hmm. and, right. and the service, like you said, is a very big part of uh, the atmosphere in your restaurant. You could change the outside and the inside, right. but the thing that you go away with is how you were treated. It's amazing right. how your family worked together with your father. You wanted, you wanted to move to Columbus. Your father knew people in banking there. You went to Columbus. Yeah. And your father understood about packing. And, and then, um, of course, uh, Stanley was in the grocery store business. He understood that. He could help with ha carrying right. the product right. in the stores. So 